got all the seam sealer on. The seam sealer was kind of not really pretty when I scraped it off. And I tried to put it on the same width and look that it originally was. You know, it was fairly wide like that. And uh, I sealed everything that I scraped seam sealer off. So it's basically ready for paint. I got to retape a little bit right there. Some of my tape gave out. Um, but I'm going to let that, I'm not going to paint it until tomorrow or the next day. All my my painting sheets, tarps, you know, I have tons of these. When I go to estate sales, I just buy bed sheets for tarps. And, you know, you can get a whole set for a dollar. And I don't like the fitted ones. I usually don't buy the fitted ones, but I do have some. But the big sheets, I think, are all up at my dad's from when I painted his house last winter. So I got to get up there and get my sheets, and that way I can cover everything really good in the garage to spray paint. The paint, the body paint, is a little different from the other pri like primers. Okay, that primer drifts off and floats around and lands here, but it's dry by the time it lands here, and it just brushes off. This paint, the overspray, floats around here. It's still wet, still wet. Maybe getting a little tacky. Lands here a little tacky. And it sticks. Now on this surface I really don't care or on this I can clean that and clean this. But I do care about things like this and you know stuff like this and this. I don't want them all covered in overspray so that's why I cover everything up when I'm painting body color. So the hydraulic lines are supposed to be done <coughs> and I'll pick them up on my way up to get the sheets, and I got a whole list I need sawhorses. I got a big list of stuff in the truck I need to pick up on the way up there. So that'll probably be a couple of days before that's painted body color. In the meantime, I made new gaskets out of foam for these wheel cylinders. The original wheel cylinders on the car had a foam gasket between the cylinder and the backing plate. So got some foam, made new ones. I made one for each wheel cylinder. This is a template um, that uh, Jeremy made it on Photoshop. He's kind of a math whiz and he just kind of measured. I gave him the wheel cylinder and he just did some measurements and, and put them in his program and Photoshop and printed it out on a piece of paper and glued it to a piece of cardboard and cut this out of the razor blade. Then just cut them out of foam and they're absolutely fit perfect. Really super happy with them. They're, they're, I'm going to save the template so if I do another Fomoco with front drum brakes in the future and I need these, I have them. You know, Ford isn't going to put these gaskets on the wheel cylinder just for the sake of doing it. If they put a part on a car there's a reason and I'm not going to put it on without it on there because obviously there's a reason you know what that might have cost Ford maybe what probably to make that a tenth of a cent or something but when you're making millions of cars that adds up and they cut cost and everywhere they can when they manufacture. If they can cut a fraction of a cent in building a car, they do it because that fraction here, that fraction there, adds up to millions of dollars. So they're not going to put something like this on if it's useless. That's why I made another one to put on the car. So I'm going to start putting the front brakes on right now. now. It's pretty cut and dry how this goes on the car. 20 to 30 foot-pounds, so I set my torque wrench to 25 foot-pounds. There we go. Let me get the other side on, then we'll do the shoes. So before I start on drum brakes, I like to set everything out. You need this tool. This uh, puts these mounting springs on and off. There's one kind of hidden there. but. These are what goes in the wheel cylinders to apply the brakes. I gave them a quick bead blast. This is an anchor. Gave it a bead blast. 
part of the self adjuster the self adjuster which I bead blasted to and uh, this has a stamp in it. It's important these are on the correct side of the car. That R means right hand side of the car. These are actually left hand threads so when you turn it to undo it it threads in when you turn it what you normally do when it turns out. I'm leaving it out because I gotta lube this up. This is the other end of it. Um, these were actually free. These were not seized up when I took the car apart. I laid the springs out. Um, this is the other tool that you need. This end installs the springs. This end removes the springs. And you definitely need some of this stuff right here. This I'll put on the star, the threads of the adjuster and I'll show you when I do it. And uh, on the backing plate, there's these flat spots. That's where the shoes actually sit and ride. So if you don't grease those when you release the brakes, they're going to squeak. So you definitely want a little dab of grease on those too. Um, I had a new old stock, one of these in my parts hoard. This is the thing for the adjuster. Um, the other one, the cable was frayed on it. So that, when I cleaned it up, so that's why I decided to go with the new one. This is identical to the original one. I have a whole drawer of these. And uh, so I got another one of those for it. So I'm just going to basically put this together. This shoe here is the primary shoe. It's a shorter shoe and that goes on the front. This is the secondary shoe. It's a larger shoe, more, more area, and that goes on the rear of the, uh, you know, back here. And I'll, sh well, maybe I can just show you why, why I don't have it together. So these shoes are on like so. The wheel cylinders tend to want to push the brakes out. But the rotation of the drum when you pu push the pedal will tend to want to do this to the, they push out, but they'll tend to want to do this. See how they tilt? I don't know if that, if my arm's in the way or not, but I didn't hold it down here. But they tend to, tend to cause, this one's pushing out here, and then this one's being pushed out and dragged around, which is pushing on the bottom. So in a sense, it pushes this shoe more tighter against the drum than the front shoe. So this shoe actually does more stopping than this shoe, than your front shoe. And your front brakes do more stopping than the rear brakes. Typically you'll go through two sets of front brakes to one set of rear brakes. And typically this shoe will wear out first. Not always the case, but most of the time. So let's, uh, let's get little dabs of grease on things and start assembling this. Hopefully I don't run out of battery here. I just noticed that it was a little low. You don't need a lot of this grease, just a little... Oops, I'm getting a little... When I wear these gloves, it's hard to judge where the stuff is on my fingertip. But you don't need a lot of this grease on these. You don't want it getting on the shoes. So just a little, little film like that is more than enough. This is where all the... Uh, shoes right on the drum and you this just prevents like I say a squeak when you release the brakes or apply them if you hear a little ear, ear, when you push the pedal or let it up you need to put a little grease on these spots all right and then I'm going to grease the this all up I'm not going to put grease down in here because if you thread it in all the way it'll hydraulically lock before it bottoms out and I want to totally bottom it. It just makes it easier to put the brakes together and then you can turn it out as you need to to adjust it to get the drums on. I used to have a what they call a no go no go gauge so it would fit over your shoes and then the other side of it would go in your drum and you'd adjust your shoes so that the you know you put the one end in your drum and fit it tight and then you'd fit it over your shoes until it just barely fit. 
I don't know where it went, but anyway, I'm going to put grease on these. And grease on this. You don't want the stuff seizing up. So I'm kind of liberal with the grease on, on the adjuster like so. And again, these are left-hand threads, so you turn it the way you normally wouldn't turn it to thread it in. And I'll wipe all the excess grease off once I got it totally assembled. That's how I like to put them together, so that they're completely threaded together like that. I put the front shoe on and then I'm gonna now put the rear shoe on. I gotta kind of get things together here for the brake adjuster. This is kind of these are always a pain in the rear to to get on. I, I like to put the springs kind of in place. Whoops. And before I put this shoe on and mount it, I like to get the adjuster in place. So put one end in there. And you gotta kinda well maybe I'll put it on that shoe. And then you can kinda work it around and get it in the other shoe where it belongs. And then you get this up. Yeah, it wants to that spring wants to pull it around, so it's a little bit of you know horsing around so anyway there so we got and then I push this pin through and uh, put this whoops I need this piece first pick it up with my gloves on the spring the other clip And then that shoe is on. So now I can uh, go ahead and put the rest of the goodies on, which is this. It's got to go on before the springs go on. This, which is part of your self adjuster. The self adjusting cable, which hooks down in there, goes up over that in on that and I'm just gonna see if I can push up well maybe I'll put the springs on well now I gotta get this on first so I'm hoping that 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 stays in there when I push this up let me get a screwdriver so I gotta push that up so I can get some slack on that cable sorry I realized I pushed the wrong button after I started going here. So hopefully that doesn't oops, do that. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it's just hard to do this. I need another hand. <laughs> another hand would be awesome. When I turned this, it popped out, so... Let me see if I can get it in there again. There we go. And hopefully that stays in when I... Oops, my my thing came out here. So let me put... Looks like I'm going to have to take things completely apart to get that. Oh, I'll try and... Uh, I'll put this... The drum rotates this way. So you want to put this spring on first. And then your other spring. So I'm going to just put this on just to save that all from coming apart. Alright, now I'm going to try and get this. If I can't get this back in, I'll just pop this shoe off. And, and In fact, I'm just going to pop it off and do that because it's just easier to do. I thought it would be. Let me get this pin out of here. 
yeah, these adjusters are the the biggest nightmare of the whole process. And you got to make sure they're in there. There, it's back in. There. All right, let me get this back in. I just put the little thing in the end of my tool, like so, and then I can just push it on. They just turn a quarter turn once you get them on to lock them on. So that's uh, that's all in, and then I can put the other spring on. You always, like I say, you always put this spring on first. The drums go this way. If you put if you put this spring on first, then that one. If something caught it, it could literally pop that spring off, and you don't want that uh, spring to pop off. So just. Uh, got a set of drum brakes installed on the front. Um, yeah, they're pretty simple. Undo adjust them, you turn the star wheel out until these shoes come out enough to where the drum just snugs on. But I haven't got the drum cleaned up or painted or the wheel bearings repacked yet. Um, I might measure the inside of the drum and just measure, you know, set these to the same measurement so they're close and then I can put the drum on and do the final adjustment. One last thing I like to do is just take a pair of pliers and bend these springs just a little bit so they're more closed like that. And then you'll just take your palms of your hands and just make sure they float on the backing plate back and forth like that because that's what duo servo brakes are supposed to. If it wasn't duo servo, it would be anchored here. Oops. Sorry. And the shoes would just do this. But being duo servo, as this shoe pushes out and hits the brake again, pushes back as it's pushing. This will be pushing out this shoe. The wheel cylinder will be pushing both shoes out. But as it pushes this shoe out, this shoe, the, like I say, the momentum tends to do that to push this end harder against the drum while the wheel cylinder is pushing this end. So you get a lot of braking on that shoe. But you just make sure they float back and forth and the adjuster. So how the adjusters work, let me see if I can get this up close enough to, to really show you how these automatic adjusters work. I can't really lower the camera anymore. That's as low as a tripod will go. So when you back up, it has the opposite effect of when you're going forward on pivoting these shoes. So when you back up, this moves this way. And this shoe tends to want to push this bottom of this shoe into the drum. That's why backing up, the brakes aren't as good because you don't have as much braking area. So as you apply the brakes, it's pushing out here and here. And this, and you're going backwards now. So this shoe is pushing this forward. And if this is moving out too far, it tightens this cable up and does this. And then when you release the brakes, it does that. Every time you stop backing up, if this cable will move a little bit, but when it moves far enough to catch that next notch there, it tightens up the brakes. So every time you stop backing up with a self-adjusting drum brake system, if the brakes need to be tightened, it automatically tightens them. That's how automatic self-adjusters work. They're pretty pretty simple cut and dry. I mean, you could probably put them on any of the older car, like my Bel Air, I could put self-adjusters on it. I'd have to replace the star wheel with one like this, you know, that's got a little because mine are big and round, so you can get a spoon in there real easy to adjust them, a brake spoon. I'll show you what that is. This is a brake spoon. This is what you use to adjust your brakes, and there's a 
rubber grommet on the back of the backing plate you pop out and you can get into this hole. So see, now I don't know if that shows up or not. I wish I could get this tripod lower. Um, there, it shows the star wheel a little bit, but it, if you look, the star wheel doesn't come close to it. So then there's this side, which is beveled, and that side totally comes to the star wheel. So you put it in there and catch that star wheel, and you can turn it to adjust the brakes. Now, on these cars, you can't turn them back to loosen them. So like when you get these cars that have been parked for 40 or 50 years, well, this car has been parked for 43 years, the best way to get the drums off on a drum system that's seized up is to get a coat hanger or something so you can get in there and push this away from the star wheel. Because when you push that away, see how I can turn it one way but can't turn it the other way? When you push this away from the star wheel, you can turn it the other way. So I get in there with a piece of coat hanger or screwdriver or something that doesn't interfere with getting your brake spoon in there. And I back the brakes off as far as I can. I turn this thing all the way in like it is right there. Usually the drums will fall right off no matter how rusted on they are. They're just makes life easier to get, you know, because you end up with a ridge in the drum on the back of the shoe here and all the rust. It's just the only way to get drums off of a car that sat for decades that are rusted on, seized up, you know, bound up and don't turn. Just push this, if it's self-adjusting brakes, push this out and turn them back. If they're not self-adjusting, you don't need to worry about that. You can just back them off like the Catalina. I just took the spoon and backed the brakes off and the drums came right off and they were they were all locked up on that car. The wheels actually turned on this car. They weren't locked up. And I surprisingly didn't have to back the adjusters off to do the brakes. But there we go. We got a drum brake job totally finished. You can see the gasket up there I made for the wheel cylinder. These are bonded shoes, the other ones were riveted. Bonded dissipates heat a little better, so you get less fading with bonded shoes than you do with riveted shoes. So if you're worried about drum brake fade, get bonded shoes. There we go. There's the copper washer and where the hydraulic hose attaches. And it attaches right there. And I'm going to take the rubber plug that was in the wheel cylinder and put it in the line there just to keep dirt and moisture out until I put the hydraulic lines on the car. They're supposed to be done tomorrow. Supposed to. So we will see. They're taking a little, they told me two days and it's been a week. So we will see. I'm about to start on the left side and I'm not going to video all the left but I wanted to show this. So this one has an L the left side and this one is right hand thread so that's why you got it's important you keep these on the correct side that one the threads are already greased up I just need to uh, put some grease on this and uh, I already greased them and I can start assembling the brakes okay the left side is all together you can see how the brakes pivot a little bit on there like they're supposed to the self-adjuster works and I have the new clip for when I get the hose I don't have the hose yet but this clip will hold the one hose and then the copper washer for the hydraulic hose at the wheel cylinder so there we go we got the front brakes on now I'm going to clean up the drums and repack the wheel bearings and paint them and put them on I did state, I think, in an earlier video that I got the drums turned and they were within specifications, got new uh, grease seals. So I'm going to throw them in the parts washer. I think I'm going to throw them in the bead blast cabinet first and clean all the uh, surface rust off everything. And then I'm going to throw them, not the bearings, the bearings I'm just going to throw in the parts washer and uh, just the drum and uh, give it a good cleaning up and uh, you know this side needs a good cleaning and uh, paint them up nice and pretty. I'll wash this out in the 
parts washer and check all the bearing races, make sure none of the bearings are bad, make sure they're all smooth and in good shape. And if they are, we'll repack them. And if they're not, we'll replace them. We'll do whatever is necessary. Before I go too far when I do wheel bearings, I always like to look at the races to see if there's any pits or obvious wear in them. And these races look pretty darn good. So I'm going to re-clean up the wheel bearings and repack them. You can actually see the... This looks like a brand new wheel bearing. This one might have been replaced at one time. I mean, that's You can see totally see all the machining in the race from when it was manufactured. So I bet money that's a new wheel bearing. And uh, they're both in really good shape. So I'm going to... No pits. I don't know if that... The machining, I don't know if the light blocks it out or not. I'll try and shine it off a little bit. But yeah, that's, they're in super nice shape. So we're going to clean up the bearings on this wheel anyway and put them back in. I'll look at the, the races in the other when I uh, do it. And I gave it a just a quick, you know, to get the heavy scale off. I mean, you can see the casting in a lot of places. And I'll uh, shoot it with a coat of paint before I put it back on. In fact, I might do that right now and then uh, um, clean up the wheel bearings. I pounded this out. This was all smashed in. You can see where I kind of hit it in there. The ball peen hammer. But it looked like somebody just pounded it on by whaling on it. And what happens when you dent these in as they rotate, they hit the cotter pin and click. So sometimes you hear a little click, 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 click as the car is going down the road. It's because the cap's been smashed on with a hammer. And that little dent's just nicking the cotter pin as it goes around. So that's why I bump them back out. You know, usually you should put something on this edge, maybe a screwdriver or something. Just lightly tap them in all the way around so you don't dent this. I'm going to give this a quick bead blast seeing it's pretty cruddy. Probably got all of about five minutes into that. I didn't bead blast the inside of it. It was just fine. Just the outside it was rusty and dented. But yeah, that makes a big difference. Just something as simple as taking four or five minutes to bump it out and bead blast it. I'm not going to paint it. I'm just going to leave it natural. The oils and greases that seep around here just a slightly will uh, keep it from rusting too badly. And I took the tape off the braking surface so it wouldn't leave uh, adhesive because I'm going to let that sit overnight. I think I'm going to call it a day. I got quite a bit done today. I'm going to do the giveaway on this, I believe, on Wednesday. So keep an eye on my videos. That's it for today. If you like my video, hit the like button. If you want to see this neat old galaxy restored, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.